Yo guys, what is up? It's Linux Benchmarks here, and in today's video, I was thinking about doing a video where I teach people how to install and play Minecraft on Linux, as uh, maybe some people uh, don't know that Minecraft does work on Linux. It actually, it's been working on Linux for, I think, almost like the release of Minecraft, like first came out back in like 2000 and like, when did Minecraft come out? Like 2010, something like that. Um, it's been working on Linux uh, for quite a while now. And um, it's it's mostly, um, it's gotten like a lot more easier, I would say, with lots of like third party launches, like the one we're gonna use today, which is called Prism Launcher. Um, if you guys don't know what Prism Launcher is, if you're like a Minecraft player, you probably do know what it is, but it basically is just like a manager for managing um, you know, your Minecraft versions, your Java versions, your mods, your shaders, um, and a bunch of other things as well. And you can change like themes in the app as well. And um, yeah, so in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to um, set up and play Minecraft on Linux. So uh, one of the first things we need to do is actually install um, FlatHub, which for most repositories today uh, do have FlatHub um, slash uh, Flatpak. We call Flatpak the packages and then FlatHub is the repository. So you want to grab FlatHub. For, for me, I'm running OpenSUSE, so I actually had to, um, I had to add the FlatHub repo as OpenSUSE doesn't include um, FlatHub by default as a repository. So I just had to go into the settings of Discover and then there was a button here before that said um, add FlatHub and then it adds it, you restart the app and then you can start installing uh, Flatpak packages. But if you don't know, um, you know, you don't have that option uh, to add a FlatHub repository, um, you basically just want to go to you can just go to FlatHub, which is uh, flathub.org, and then you go set up FlatHub, and then you select the distro that you want to install uh, FlatHub on. So for me, it's OpenSUSE, so um, I already had it, but basically you need to do a terminal command, um, or it says here, Flatpak is available in the default repositories of all currently maintained OpenSUSE, Leap, and OpenSUSE Tumbleweed version. So it is included. Um, but for me, when I opened up Discover, FlatHub wasn't there. So just like the store, it wasn't there. So I had to add it. Um, so you can either do the, um, the zipper command for OpenSUSE, um, or you can just like do the remote add uh, repository for FlatHub. Also, if you want to do it for like Ubuntu, you would just do sudo apt install Flatpak. Um, or if you're on an older Ubuntu version, you would just, you know, add the repository, do an update, and then do apt install Flatpak. And then for the plugin for GNOME software, so if you use the GNOME software manager you need the uh, plugin for Flatpak to uh, work so you can actually see Flatpak packages in the GNOME software store um, and then here again you can add the repository through a command as well so after you have done installing FlatHub you want to go to your um, store so for me it's going to be discover which is on KDE Plasma if you're on GNOME then you would just select GNOME software and you could just install it through there um, or if you know if you're on anything else like any type of GNOME gnome based um like desktop environment um some may look different uh like um what, uh, i think linux mint uses gnome software but it's an older like gtk2 version of uh, gnome software and then also there's like zorian os which has its own um you know uh, it's like a gtk3 version with like different uh customized theme on top of it so don't get confused when i say gnome software because it's basically all the same on any type of gnome desktop environment but if you're in kde posma it's the discover store and you know you just want to search for uh, prism launcher and then for me here it is you can have a look at um you know screenshots which for some reason there's a cross that's pretty funny but you can see it here um so basically i'm going to uh, it's because we had the flatter beta selected i think so if we select this one then the screenshots will show up properly better so um, you can also, if you want to, you can add the FlatHub beta repo. I only use it for some apps that offer beta versions. So for like an example, OBS, if I want the beta version of OBS, I will add the FlatHub beta repo. And then I just go into here and then select FlatHub beta repo for the beta version of OBS. That's just something uh, if you don't know. So you want to select the FlatHub 7.2 version of Prism Launcher. You want to click install and then it's going to download it. So you can click on task and you see what it's up to basically and yeah i'll see you guys when it's done uh downloading and installing all right and now it's done downloading and installing so now we can just click launch as you can see here um you know we can select american english click 
next. And then this is where we get to select our Java version. Uh, so, and like memory allocation for Java when it's running. Uh, so you got the one that they've selected for us already, which is 17.0.7. 17 um, you can select the other ones if for some reason you want to use an older version. Um, I'm not really into the whole Minecraft Java thing. So like, I don't know um, why someone would use an older version, uh, maybe for like hardware or something, um, or just like a specific version of Minecraft maybe. Uh, but like they've already used uh, uh, you're already recommended 17.0.7 so we're going to select that one um, and then we can change you know the icons you can change the uh, system colors and we can also add a cat as a background which is very <laughs> interesting um, i guess that's a nice addition to prison launcher and uh, here we are we're all um you know into the actual application so the first thing usually that i do first is we add a microsoft account um, so we go to the little like account section and we click add microsoft then it's going to open a page for us here so it's microsoft.com slash link so we click that that will open in my firefox browser to verify and we copy this code here real quick and we click next all right and now it is it is <laughs> it is now connected <laughs> as we can see um, so now we just want to click close and we want to create a new instance. So this is where we can select all types of different versions of Minecraft. You can either select, you know, you got your like vanilla versions of Minecraft. Um, we can also choose a mod loader to install for us as well. Um, so we can also choose like snapshots or old snapshots or betas or alphas or experimentals. We can select different type of, um, like I said, like we can install um, CurseForge, which is a bunch of different types of mods, um, FTB, Legacy, um, all types of different things. But for us, we'll just choose custom or we'll select Forge because we do need Forge to be installed for like mods and all that. And we just want to click OK. So now we're going to click launch and it's going to download all the libraries necessary. We can expand this and look at what it's downloading, which is going pretty quickly, especially if you have fast internet, it's going to zoom through this shit. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys when it's um, done uh, downloading that as well. All right, and uh, now it's done downloading. It actually decided to launch as well because we did click launch. And um, yeah, it's just loading everything up. Um, and here we are. It is working. <laughs> So now you just want to click continue, um, and then we can you know, look at our mods here. So we can just got Minecraft version 1.20.1, and we've got Forge 47.1.0, and we can also go to options. We probably want to turn off VSync because I don't want that shit. Um, also turn this to unlimited because I want to use all of my resources on my computer. Um, change the FTI, you know, change the FMP to Quake Pro, you know, because that's, that's shit right there. Um, and then... What's the other thing? We need to turn this to full screen. And yeah, we can create a new world. Um, this shouldn't take very long. And uh, yeah, alrighty. We just gotta wait this to load for a sec. And um, yeah, now we are running Minecraft. <laughs> and it seems to be running quite well now. It's just smoothing out because it's just load all the chunks. It's like the world. And uh, yeah, now it's actually running quite well and this sensitivity is very fucking high for some reason <laughs> so now that we've closed uh minecraft we are going to uh learn how to you know like install extra mods or shaders and uh, install optifine to actually get like shaders working on minecraft so you want to go on the version that you want to uh edit and you just want to click the edit button which will then launch up a little sub menu uh where you can create and install uh mods shaders um, there's also like a manager as well that you can go through and as you can see here now we're in it uh, we can go to mods we can click download mods and we can basically search for all types of different mods here um, grab them uh, pretty easily i would say um, and then so basically you want to go to mods you want to go add file and you want to download um, optifine from optifine's website and download the the dot jar version latest version of optifine for the 
you know, version of Minecraft that you want to run Optifine on. Uh, it was like that. And then uh, that's basically basically it for Optifine. Then if you want to, you know, of course, if you're installing Optifine, you probably want to use shaders. Um, so click, click download shaders. I'm gonna, just going to use BSL because that's just very, just for this video, I would say. It's, um, BSL shaders are pretty cool, I would say. They do look very nice. Um, and just make sure that the tick is on as well so you can actually you know use it um, and then that would probably be it for that probably the next thing i would do is if you want uh, feral game mode or mango hud and if you don't know what uh, you know, game mode is it's basically just a type of scheduler that makes sure that the game that you're running um, is basically focused as a process so it changes a couple things improves a couple things like audio glitches for sometimes with particular like wine games and this, this isn't wine this is native under OpenGL so that doesn't really apply here but it's just a type of scheduler that can improve the performance if you're on like an older computer or older laptop but um, I usually always enable Mango HUD because Mango HUD's a, a fucking really cool FPS overlay uh, to use in all types of different games under Proton, Wine or whatever. And um, you can also enable a discrete GPU, um, which it says here, uses the discrete GPU instead of the primary GPU. So you have one of those, you want to uh, click that so that you can actually use that discrete GPU. And uh, yeah, now, now we'll click launch and we can also see a Minecraft log here. Uh, if we want to look at, you know, if any errors show up um, and just to see if you know, everything is um, running properly. As you can see here, Mango HUD is running. Now, Mango HUD won't be installed right out of the gate. I forgot to say this before. Um, you want to install uh, Mango HUD through Flatpak. So one of the things is that when you are using Mango HUD, there's a system package version and then there's a Flatpak version of Mango HUD. Um, so basically you just want to do Flatpak install uh, Mango HUD and then select FlatHub system. Uh, and then you want to select the Vulcan layer dot Mango HUD and then the latest version. So for me, it's 23.08. So I'll just select four um, and it's already installed for me. As you can see in the <laughs> Minecraft, it is using it. And um, yeah, we can go back into the single player world that we have. Actually, I'll go back into this one that I was testing um, just like an hour ago. I was just uh, fucking around with it to see if everything was working properly. And um, yeah, now we can basically see if our shaders are working, which as you can see here, here it is. We can select it, it will reload. Um, and then we can also turn on like anti-aliasing, uh, which looks very nice, I would say. We can change it to probably like 4X FXAA. Um, and then, yeah, as we can see here, it is now working. And we're getting decent, decent amount of FPS. It's kind of like loading everything at the moment. So the FPS isn't quite that great um, because we move around. So it's bouncing up and down because it's loading in new stuff. And um, yeah, that's basically probably like the end of the video, I would say. If you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial of how to set up Minecraft on Linux, you definitely can give it a like. It would really appreciate it. It would help the YouTube algorithm recommend this video to other people that want to set up Minecraft on Linux uh, using like a third party launcher like Prism. Uh, launcher and you know if you want to you can subscribe to the channel um, it is uh, you know something that I want to continue making videos on so if you do really enjoy my channel and you want to help out I would highly recommend just subscribing to the channel um, or if you know if you're into Linux, uh, just Linux stuff in general, or Linux gaming in particular, um, I would definitely um, subscribe to this channel because I do a decent amount of gaming tutorials on Linux. It's, it's my main operating system that I do use and I love helping people out. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.